Today we want to talk to you about what to look for when you're buying a used diesel truck and hopefully we can teach you some stuff that will um, that will give you some ammunition when you're going to buy any kind of a used vehicle. The first thing that you're going to want to do when you're buying a used vehicle, used diesel truck, you're going to want to set your budget. If you've got a very specific budget in mind, that is going to move, let, let you know exactly what platform of truck that you're going to probably be in. If you don't have a budget, you're just going to go out there and find a truck you like, you don't care what it's going to cost you, well, this really doesn't apply to that. But being budget, budget specific is going to tell you exactly what platform, almost exactly what platform you're going to be looking at, and most especially the year and the mileage range on the vehicles. So you know kind of what failures to look for. You want to study those platforms as well. Study the year, make, and model of the truck that you're looking at buying. Know what the common failures are for that truck. and then. Look Look for those types of things when you throw the hood open on the truck or you look underneath of it and so on. Those will greatly affect how much that you're going uh, to pay for the truck and it kind of gives you a little bit of bargaining power when you're talking to the seller on the trucks. Now, a uh, couple of things that are good tools when you're buying a used vehicle. Number one, everybody knows about a Carfax. A Carfax is going to tell you if the truck's really ever been wrecked, if it was reported to the insurance company, or any type of reported things that make it onto the Carfax. I don't know exactly all the metrics that go into it, but the information on a Carfax is very relative and it's a good thing to have. The second thing that hardly anybody ever looks at is doing a VIN check on a vehicle. Now, what is a VIN check? So you can take a VIN check on a vehicle, especially newer vehicles, like a 2011 and up. You can take the VIN to the dealership. So Chevrolet, if I'm looking at a Chevrolet, I'll take the VIN of this Chevrolet I'm looking to to the dealership. And what they can do is they can give you a printout of all of the stuff that was done to this truck, the truck that you're looking at, done to it under uh, under warranty. They also report the things that are done to the truck based on the VIN that's outside of warranty. So what is that going to tell you? I'm a firm believer that some trucks are lemons and when you've got a lemon, people are going to want to get out from under it. So if you take a, a VIN check on a truck and it looks like a daggone wrap sheet from, uh, you know, it just, everything in the world's been done to this truck, you're going to know that that truck specifically is probably got some problem, is, is probably problematic. You might want to even stay away from it. Now, some people will look at that and say, hey, everything on the truck's been replaced. I don't have to look at it. Like I said, I'm a firm believer that every once in a while, it's a good looking car. Every once in a while, you get a truck that you just can't fix. I stay away from trucks like that. Now, uh, now on the older model trucks, and that's not going to apply to you, but you can get some past history on the truck if you do a VIN check on it and the dealership's willing to give you one. If there was an engine replaced in the truck or something like that, you're going to see that on the VIN check if it was reported, and it's just a good thing to have. Uh, I, always, I always make sure that I get a VIN check on the truck. So now, our thought for this series is we're going to try to break this up in platform specific, so we're going to go into 98 to 02 Dodge and what to look for and then we're going to go to 11 to current Chevrolets and what to look for if you're buying a, a new one so look for those but this general overview we want to show you some of the things that you're going to look for on trucks specifically very generally that's going to help you with your bargain, bargaining on your price now listen before we go any farther with this I want you to know this is not a how-to guide for you all to absolutely beat sellers up on pricing more specifically it's for guys for you not to pay too much money for these trucks because this really hurts the market for the rest of us. You guys that are paying $15,000 for 98 to 02 trucks, you're kind of hurting it for the rest of us because these trucks aren't worth $15,000. They need to be in that taxable range. Whatever you're paying taxes on your vehicle and whatever the trade-in value is, kind of a mismatch of those two dollar figures, that's really where the truck needs to lie. If your bank won't if your bank won't uh, loan you the amount of money for the truck that you're trying to buy, you're paying too much money for it. You can pretty much bank on that. I mean, and there's other things that go into that, what modifications are done to that, uh, and so on. But you have to understand as well, a lot of performance modifications to the truck also means that the truck's probably been run pretty hard, so you've got to take that into consideration. All of that is part of the body of work of what amount of money that you're going to pay for the truck. So. 
Real generally, what do I look for when I'm buying a used vehicle? Well, first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna look underneath the vehicle and see if there are any obvious leaks underneath the vehicle. If there is a humongous oil leak underneath of the truck, you're gonna wanna figure out what that oil leak is and can you fix it. If you can fix it and you know what that cost is gonna be to you, then morph that into your price. And if you don't mind, go ahead and fix it and the truck's all yours. Another thing that you always also wanna look at is you're gonna wanna look for rust. Rust, especially in northern states, is a very relative thing. When rust starts, especially on undercarriage, it's not going to stop. You can slow it down. There's a few things that you can do, some aftermarket products that you can add to it, but you're really just not going to stop it. So you've got to understand that if you're going to keep this truck for a long, long time, you're going to keep it for a long, long time, that means you're going to be doing a lot of work to it in the in the future. Understand that if it's got a lot of rust on it, all the bolts are going to break and da 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 you know, all of those things you got to take into consideration. Now, underneath of the hood, a basically stock truck, no, no performance modifications done to it. It's got the stock air box on it. Looks like the alternator's been changed on this truck. That's a good thing. Couple of new batteries, pretty clean underneath the hood. That lets us know that the, the person that had this truck, they basically, they cared about it. They took enough care of it to want to make sure that all of the leaks were taken care of. Um, you know, you don't have any kind of screwed up, uh, you know, uh, splices on the wiring harness or anything like that. Uh, so this is a good old truck, you know, it's, a, it's an old truck, it's a cleaner truck, gives you a good base to start with. Now when you're looking at a newer truck, like the LML here, you look underneath the hood of this and there's a lot of different performance modifications done to it. There's dual CP3s, there's an aftermarket air intake, um, there's a change of the, uh, the intake plenum. Those are things that are going to go into, into your price of what you're going to pay for this truck. You're going to have to know, hey, this truck is higher horsepower, a lot of modifications have been done to it, what am I willing to give for this truck? Um, you know, we talked about rust, we talked about performance modifications. One thing we really don't talk about is interior a lot. Um, you know, on an older truck, if you've got a clean interior, that's going to go into um, the truck's overall appearance. Like this truck's really, really clean inside. That's going to go into the overall price of the truck. You know that the owner that had it before took a lot of care of it, but don't let uh, Armor All fool you. Just because they put Armor All on the door panels doesn't mean the truck's been taken care of. It just means it's been cleaned up right before you went to buy it. You know, that's good, you know, just general um, ideas of what to look for in a truck. Uh, you know, if you have any questions on the vehicle specific part of it, you can always give us a call. You know, just be patient. Uh, patience is a, is a, uh, a virtue in, the, in these things. Be patient with it. Look for the truck that's right for you. Don't really settle. If you settle, you're going to get it yourself into a truck that a few months down the road, you're going to say, man, I really wish I hadn't bought this truck and I really wish I hadn't paid that much for the truck that I really didn't want in the first place. So be patient, get what you want, look for obvious signs on the, on the outside of the truck and then on the inside of the truck. As to the condition of the truck, let mileage be a factor for you, let the asking price obviously be a factor for you. Carfax, VIN check, clean title, those things. Let all of that be part of the body of work in the truck that you buy. And when you're spending this much money, you want to make sure that you do it right the first time. I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. Like and subscribe to our channel. And if you've got any questions, please give us a call. Thank you.